This is the Power Producers Podcast, where we are refining and redefining the sales game. Rule number one is you have to believe in yourself. You're the only one who doesn't think you belong in this appointment. The prospect has already validated your existence by scheduling time with you. Get it through your head you belong here, go in there, crush it, and close the deal. A place where sales professionals can come to learn from other sales professionals and thought leaders that have mastered their craft. The difference between a good salesperson and a best-in-class salesperson is only two minutes. By spending an extra two minutes on what you might think is a mundane task in the sales game, you separate yourselves from the pack, you grow your book of business, you close more deals, and you retain your accounts. As well as their peers who are still striving for perfection to achieve their why. I have a wife and four kids. Failure is not an option. Real sales professionals. Real stories. Real results. Are you ready to feel the power? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Power Producers Podcast, where we are refining and redefining the sales game. Kyle's beard is looking overly luscious today. See, I don't know what you got going on, but my, I see beard, I see beard ornaments in your near future this Christmas for sure. That time of year, man. It's, um, it, it has not been trimmed in a while. I know. I can tell. You almost look <laughs> like you're an animal at this point. What's uh, what's the story with the sugar skull hat, man? Where's that from? You know, I just thought it was cool. I bought I do several. Too. I, I bought several hats from this company, Branded Bills, which oh, yeah. is another one of those Facebook uh, gotchas. And yeah, they'll uh, get they they will get you too, man. Like all my buddies have their agency hats from there. Yeah, they've got some good hats, and and then I they they sent me some email with like some sugar skulls and some Halloween related stuff. So I, I copped a few, I see you got your key West hat on there. I'm I'll, I'll be there at the end of the week. What? Yep. This is the, this is the, this is the third and last or fourth, I guess the fourth trip. Yeah. Um, seriously. Holy cow, yeah. man. Yeah. My buddy's bachelor party. It's just like, it Oh, just, this is the big one. This is, well, this Dude. is the second, this is the second bachelor party in. Oh, in, okay yeah it's so it's just it's ridiculous so i already got the golf cart rented and ready to go i am going to add you to something that you are going to appreciate very very much it's a key west facebook group called gravity something or other and it's all pictures of people who passed out and are laying in various places oh yeah yeah key yeah west. like gravity if, one if for no other reason i need you to have access to that group so that you can monitor the big cat when he's down there no kidding. <laughs> well, listen, I don't want to keep this guy on the sidelines. Anymore. Yes, no worries, man. I'm enjoying that conversation, man. Hey, you we know? got a good, yeah, we got a good guest today. This, this guy, you know, he's, he's a special dude, man. I, I got to know Jason a little bit over the course of the last couple of years. And, and he came to the boot camp that we did at innovation. He's been on some of our other boot camps. He's a member of the power producers mastermind. And, you know, Jason Rodriguez is the owner of prominent insurance and he's got locations in Wilmington, Delaware, and Philly. Half the time, my guy's down in Miami though, when I'm talking to him, I don't know what that's all about. I'm sure we'll figure it out as the conversation goes on. But the reason I wanted to have Jason come on today is because he's in the process of franchising the prominent brand, but he's not, he's not just franchising it. He's doing it for some very specific reasons. And we're going to get into that in a little bit, but before we do, Jason, give us the backstory, man. How'd you, how'd you end up in insurance? Uh, you know, uh, first I would like to thank you for giving us the, giving me the opportunity to be on your platform. Appreciate all you, you know, you do for our, our community and, um, thank you, you know, um, so a little bit about myself, you know, how I got in, um, insurance, always been an entrepreneur, you know, trying to figure out what we need to do in our lives. Always had our, our own business from, you know, following footsteps of my family. Um, so how did I get an insurance? I had a transportation company and, you know, we used to take um, students to and from Delaware University to New York City. We uh, had a, a contract with the ESL program and, you know, doing commercial order, you know, the the premiums can be <laughs> crazy. So uh, we was paying like $30,000 uh, annually. And me as an entrepreneur, I'm like, hey, how can I get some of that back, you know? And uh, the person that was uh, insuring me at that particular time, you know, uh, I was asking him about, hey, how, like, how do you get insurance? I thought, you know, 
you needed some formal education, bachelor's degree, had to go to college. And he was like, nah, just licensing, you know, a little uh, self-study course and you can do what I can do. I said, hey, I can, and I can get some of that that I'm paying you back. He said, yeah, you know? So that's what I did. And I got into this industry in uh, 2010. And uh, ever since, uh, you know, I, I love it. Man, you're OG. I didn't realize you'd been in since 2010. That's almost as long yeah. as I've been doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been in there, you know, just just, just learning, you know, uh, learning, uh, you know, when you come in, you write anything that breathes. You had a pulse. I was trying to uh, get you a policy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think all of us have been there before. Talk a little bit about sort of the demographic of your firm now, though. I mean, are you are you predominantly commercial, personal? What's your mix look like? So, so yeah, we we uh we started off predominantly personal, um, and we are, we're mixing it up right now uh, with the commercial. So we only deal with a uh, small business, you know, small commercial, you know, anything under ten thousand, and uh, agency revenue. That's that's our that's our sweet spot, you know, um, and that's what we do our best work at. So we we. We are like uh, 60, 40, uh, 60 personal, 40 commercial and trying to get that commercial small business up. Uh, what made to... you decide to stick with the, I mean, and look, I'm not, by no means am I pushing back on you. Everybody has to decide what works best for them, right? Like, I don't believe that there's any one person in our industry that's got the whole thing figured it out, figured out, right? They, we all do our thing that works for us. And there's certain things that I do that I think are applicable to other agencies in terms of sales process and stuff like that. But I don't expect everybody to follow every single thing I'm doing in my agency. I would hope they didn't because there's things that I did have done that I wouldn't want them doing because there have been mistakes. But, you know, when you decided we wanted you wanted to kind of focus on that 10,000 in revenue and under market, what was your thought process behind doing that? Um, it was it was basically the resources uh, that we have to be able to give to that them individuals. Um, and I know, you know, being on your power producers, you know, um, membership program, and the, the resources that you need, and the the, uh, the personnel that you may have to have to get after that bigger market. I, I didn't feel that we was there at this particular time. That so, makes sense. You know, uh, it's basically, and, and then the knowledge and the things that you need to know, you know, when you, when you're an entrepreneur as myself and you're the uh, owner, you wearing all types of hats on so marketing, I'm servicing, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, trying to get my CIC, trying to get this, you know, all of these. So, you know, just stretching yourself thin. Um, so that's where we, you know, that's why we decided to just hold off on that and concentrate on, you know, where we can get the resources and be able to help that particular client at our best ability. So that's where we do our best work, right? As of right now. Yeah, well, that's all good, man. That's exactly what you should do is look at what you're going to do the best at and then go do it. I mean, it really yeah, is that easy. It's just a shame too many people see the shiny object and they try and chase after it. And, you know, look, I'm a perfect example of that with personal lines in our agency, right? Biggest disaster yeah. ever. You know, we brought it in and, and we started writing it. And now the market in Florida is so absolutely insane you know, half the carriers we had went bankrupt at this point. When I say the ca carriers we had, I'm talking about our contracts specifically, but I mean, shoot, it may be close to half the carriers in Florida at this point too. Yeah, no kidding, man. For a while there, it was like every couple of weeks, there was another list of like 20 carriers that were going belly up. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, market, market access is an issue, but I mean, market, market access is always an issue. It doesn't matter when you're opening a scratch agency, you know, it's not like you just say, Hey, can I, can, can I get a contract? Would you mind appointing me? And they're like, Oh yeah, we've been waiting for you to call. Come on in. Man. <laughs> we're going to give you the, we're going to give you the super secret contingency structure too. Don't tell anybody else about this. We've been saving this one just for you. Right. It never That's happens right. that way. So, you know, let me ask you this. What kind of struggles did you have as you were open in the agency originally? What were the obstacles and the roadblocks that you came into that that you think, you know, you had to fight to to get through? So, yeah, like you just know, you know, when you come in on the uh, PNC side, um, it's real difficult in the beginning. So we started off with a lot of um, non-admitted carriers as well, brokers we had to deal with, and then, you know, um, clients clients that had you know on a personal side you know um not superior you know not not uh 
the, the clients that everybody wants. So we had to deal with those, the victorious, like companies that nobody ever heard, try to get those, get our feet wet. And, and I was a great networker. So I, I, I built, I, I, I built relationships with other, you know, carriers as well. And over time, put the marketing plan together and was able to get the progressives and, you know, start there, build up a book and show other people, hey, this is our potential. This is what we're able to do. And then they gave us a shot and started to build on top of that, you know, put numbers on the board. Because, you know, um, with all of these carriers, they want commitments as well, you know, um, and they want to see your ability to be able to put numbers on a board. And we was able to exhibit that. And then we started to get one and then strategically figure out the ones that we wanted to do business with. That's how I went into it as well. I didn't just want to get a uh, thousand carriers and have those commitments and they're not the clients that we're serving or we're not in the market to be able to serve the clients that they want, you know, at, at the same time, because you may have a carrier and their appetite is totally different and you just want the name. And uh, we haven't did that yet. So. Uh, we've been fortunate to be able to get the carriers that we wanted to do business with. Nice. Well, that's good. What was, um, yeah, I was curious. I mean, you said that you've been a serial entrepreneur, right? Like, so you've done a bunch of things yes. what, and, and learned, you know, countless numbers of lessons, I would imagine. But what was, what would you say is the biggest lesson you learned when you opened up your agency? Maybe something, maybe like you had something in your head that you were like, okay, this is how it's going to be. And then it was totally different or I don't know. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, 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 the structure, I didn't, you know, uh, uh, chargebacks, <laughs> you know, you write a new business. You're like, Hey, I got this money. You start to spend before you get even like, Hey, Oh, wow. I got to give some of this back. What's that about? You know? So, uh, I didn't know about chargebacks, which is a big thing in our industry. If somebody doesn't stay on the books and when you, you know, you write in, uh, non-preferred clients, with uh, car insurance about four or $500 a month, you know they shopping at every month. Cause I said I would, if my car insurance was that amount of money, I'll be shopping at every month. So those are the clients we dealt with. And just that, you know, learning, um, learning to, you know, be more frugal with uh, the money that's coming into the agency. Yeah, the other one too, man, we just got dinged with two of these recently. Coincidentally, they were both Kyle's accounts. Um, but- <laughs> No, it, uh, you know, you deal with some of this business when you get into excess and surplus lines, man, and the audit's a big deal too, right? Because people, people will tell you they understand they're going to be audited. You can even talk to them about making midterm adjustments. And in this case, we had done that and they just wanted to accrue the money and be ready to pay for it. Well, when the audit comes and you bill for it, you know, you've got a limited amount of time to be able to remit that money to your wholesaler. And if you don't pay that to them in that amount of time, they send it back to the carrier for direct collections and you're screwed because you lose your commission on the audit premium at that point. So, you know, that's another tough lesson that I've learned. And, you know, it's, it's brutal because what do you really do, man? You can only send an invoice to somebody and follow up with them so many times. To complicate matters for us, though, these people actually batted it around for like two or three weeks. I mean, figuring out how were they going to pay for it? You know, are they going to pay for a card versus ACH? One of them came back and said, hey, can you put this on installments for me? And I'm like, no, I can't put it on in installments. We we told you all of this up front. So they end up paying it, you know, through IPFS total pay, which then deposits it into our account since it's a total pay deal and they missed the deadline. Both of them got sent back to the carrier for direct collections in between the time that they, they um, paid and their funds actually cleared and got put into our bank account. So now I've got two accounts I'm not getting any revenue for, and I got to chase down how to pay directly to the carrier in order to, you know, get it cleared up so they don't have collections attorneys and stuff, you know, calling them all the time. And I share that story because I think a lot of times people listen to podcasts and they assume that everything's all, you know, roses in the agencies of the people who run the podcast. And I just told you that was too, you know, it's not like it was a huge amount. My family and, and Kyle's family is going to be okay. You know, we're going to still be able to eat this week, but <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not cool, right? It's not cool to not have that revenue. And so, you know, again, to me, I, it goes back to something that we, we need to be doing a good job of all the time. And, and that is 
you better underwrite those accounts on the front end and make sure that they're the kind of account you actually want to be doing business with, right? And so we're at a point in our growth curve now that we can be picky. We can be selective as to who we want to work with and who we don't. And I can honestly say that, um, you know, with the one of these accounts, they'll never come yeah. back. Like, no, no, you're not welcome. Sorry. No, especially one because- invite to the dance. The other one's actually still an existing client. And it was just, it was just a, a lot of back and forth while the invoice was out. And I mean, it, it is what it is. I'd rather just say, okay, it's okay. It's okay that we didn't get commission on this because this is a growing account and we'd like to have it for a long time. And the guy's actually a really good dude. Like it's not, right. not everybody's no, the, a deadbeat in this situation. Yeah, no, no, no. And, and the other one obviously was, was worse because of the relationship of, uh, you know, like, like the personal relationship there between, uh, between our families. So that, that, that was annoying. Um, but probably, um, looking back, I mean, it was, it was done as a favor. And then there were several things over the course of the time that they were in the agency that were a little bit red flaggy that, uh, oh, yeah. That, that should have probably been picked up on, but because there was that personal relationship. Um, you overlooked it. <laughs> it was, it, it was, it was, it, I don't know if it was overlooked or if it was more so just kind of turned a, you know, turned a blind <laughs> eye to it um, in order to just kind of keep, keep things kosher. But, um, but yeah, looking back, I mean, that, that's probably that, that can not probably, it definitely contributed to the way that things played out. Yeah, I would think so too. But I mean, I just don't know how many people understand or have or realize as producers that you've only got a limited amount of time to get this. That, I mean, that's the whole point of the story, right? Like you talk about chargebacks. That's the one a lot of people talk about. A lot of people don't talk about that if you don't collect that audit in a timely fashion for an ENS carrier, you lose your commission on that. There's not even a chargeback. You'll never see it. <laughs> And it'll go directly to them. And you got to be careful, man. You don't want to be in that kind of a position. So, um, you know, you got it figured out now, right? You've been doing this for 12 years. Yes. And, Not yet. Know, no, I got it all figured out, but uh, <laughs> yeah, working through the process. Well, none of us will ever have it all figured yeah. out, but I think anybody listening to this can probably relate. But, you know, you've decided now it's time to, to expand the business. Yes. So I'm interested... You know, you've said that you want to franchise. Why would you pick franchising over just opening other offices in other areas? Yeah, because uh, I, I like the franchise model because there's, there's checks and balances, there's systems. Um, you know, to get the franchise, you have to have everything in order. You know, um, and I wanted, and I and I felt that if more um, appealing to individuals to say, hey, we have a franchise where they can be protected by franchise law as well. Um, and then in, the, in your franchise disclosure document as well, you know, you got to list your losses and your successes and your wins. Um, so they have ability to see how we're doing in the system, things of that nature. Um, so I chose that because I was doing it. I was trying to, you know, play with that. Just, just give people opportunity, you know, try to give people access to our markets. We was, we was coming up with different scenarios and then um, franchising felt like a, a strong foundation for us to build on. Where people, the, you know, our franchisees can feel confident on, hey, okay, we got checks and balances. There's documentation that needs to be noted on, on the state level and things of that nature for us to be secure in this system as well. So uh, that's the that's the model we felt that we can build on. But you're not just trying to open franchises. You're you're specifically also trying to help minorities in this process. And I think that that's what's correct. I think that's what's so cool about what you're doing. And you're not you don't hide behind that, right? Like you're flat yeah. out saying, "Look, we want to give we want to give all of our all of our minority brothers and sisters an equal opportunity." Um, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so it's, it's a great industry. And like, you know, like like me, I, been, I was a scratch agency, just an entrepreneur. I know, uh, so with no no prior mentorship, um, and I know the hurdles I had to go over, you know, what I had to be able to obtain to get to where I'm at today, which wasn't an easy, you know, thing. So what we're doing is, you know, we and 
And we understand, you know, a lot of carriers, a lot of agencies is pushing diversity, you know, and we look at the market over 400,000, you know, um, insurance agents, health, all of that included, and it's less than 10% uh, minority. And then if you look at the minority, it's, it's, it's all, you know, ethnic groups of minorities. So we, we, we're trying to, you know, increase that number over the next 10 years by 10%, you know, um, as well. And we have, and I know, especially with minorities, you need the platforms, you need the programs, you need the systems and, 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 in order for them to be able to grow profitably without having them to come in and figure the things out like you and I may have done. Um, so we give them that platform, hold their hands. We, we able to speak their language, know some of the, you know, um, let's say in the marketplace, some of the, the things we may encounter as well of doing business, you know, cause in, in a lot of places, you know, the playing field ain't always going to be fair, but it's okay. You know, we're going to deal with, we're going to deal with that as well as it comes. So we, we know how to navigate and be able to, uh, build a profitable business. So, um, this is the things that we offering. So, so, so that you know. that was actually you teed that up perfectly for my next question. And, you know, my next question is how much of this is based off of personal experiences that you've had? I mean, you reference it yourself. You know, it's not always a level playing field in the marketplace. Talk a little bit about some of the stuff that you've been through, man. I mean, here and here's okay. here's the thing. I want to set the table the right way. We had Mike McKean on the podcast. Right. And. We were talking about how just overly difficult it is right now for women in insurance. It's not a level level playing field for women either. And, you know, my, my theory, philosophy, whatever you want to call it on any of this stuff is, you know, the way, the way you tackle this problem, and it is a problem, both with minorities in the insurance game, as well as, as females, you got to create awareness first, man. And, and, and the reason why I say that is because there are just a lot of people out there who are just completely oblivious to what it's like, you know, and it's not that they're bad people. It's not that they're, you know, they're biased or prejudiced in any way. They simply don't see life through your lens, Jason. They don't get it because oh, wow. they, they, and they're never going to, because maybe the color of their skin's different. Maybe, um, you know, their gender's different. I mean, let's call it what it is. Sexual preference may be different, right? And there's not always a level playing field in that situation, but you also can't just go out and say, you know what, we're going to fix this today. Going forward, this is what's going to happen. You got to create awareness first. And with awareness become, there then comes activity where people can actually, you know, they start thinking through things. They start, like, I've listened to... <coughs> you know, multiple times since we had Meg on the podcast, even I've gone back and listened to other episodes and every time that we have a guest on and I, and I don't, I'm not throwing shade at anybody, but I'm just pointing out, I, I'm making the point that I'm trying to make by saying this. A lot of times you'll hear him say, well, we got to go in and get rid of the other guy or when he, when he does this or boy, he wasn't very happy with him. Right. It's all like male pronouns, male, everything. And it, it's just interesting to me because that tells me that's what the unfiltered view of our industry is. When somebody's having a normal conversation with you and you listen closely, you can hear their perception of things. It's never the female producer that you're displacing. A, because most of the female producers that I know are nasty and they don't lose accounts, man. They're, they're nasty to compete against. They know their stuff. They have, they're very good at what they do. And so maybe, you know, I'd like to think that that's why they're saying it, but it's not, it's because they're just not enough times where we go in that it's, you know, him, him and her or him or her or whatever else. And I, I do think we need to, to bring awareness to that because I'm probably guilty of it too. If I go back and listen to myself talk and I'm somebody who thinks that I'm pretty, I, I operate with my eyes pretty much wide open. Most of the time I'm looking for ways to help minorities, to help females that are trying to, to, to advance themselves in the industry. And certainly I can help create awareness because we've got a good sized audience, but you know, me sitting here truthfully is a middle-aged white male who is an agency principal. I'm the perceived problem, man, right? <laughs> like I'm the exact demographic 
that's causing the issues. And so, you know, talk a little bit about your own personal experiences and some of the challenges that you've had, because I think your story is what's going to begin to number one, just create awareness so that we can think about starting to drive change. But number two, if we've got the other people out there that are in a similar position as to where you were 12 years ago, and they're like, this guy gets it, man. He understands what I'm dealing with. And I, this is somebody I would like to align myself with. And I didn't even know, you know, I didn't even know that they had the ability to do a franchise and help us with this. So talk yeah. a little bit about it. So you said a lot, you know, you said a lot and I appreciate it because you do, you know, you do, uh, you do help our community and I appreciate that as well. So, you know, just, just anything. And we don't, we don't make any excuses. We know what it is. And I, and, and I'm not that individual that make an excuse. I'm gonna go hard every day and do what I have to do. But you know, if, if a lot of the minority, especially, you know, the black and Spanish community, a lot of us is first generation entrepreneurs. So we're not the ones doing business here. And if you look at, you look at, you know, the, the accounts that you go after, middle market, most of the senior management, as you described, is male Caucasian, you know, so it's, it's and everybody's pushing diversity, and which is a great thing today. Um, but it's still difficult to even get some of these meetings because uh, they don't relate to us. And we may have a counterpart, they may have a relationship with or any, any, any other thing that they may encounter. So that, uh, they don't, they, a lot of, uh, they don't understand, even with the carriers, we, we make them aware, like, hey, it's not easy to go out there, because a lot of us is not doing business, a lot of minorities is not, we're starting to today, you know, with the emergence of social media, and content, and putting things out over Instagram, we're starting to do business, um, but other than that, you know, it's real difficult to be able to sometimes to get that same account. We may have more resources. We may have everything that they need, but they just still tell us no and don't give us a reason why they're telling us no, you know? Um, and I see, you know, I, I, you know, I've been in it, as you said, 12 years. So I've seen a lot, you know, not even getting an appointment or having a better, uh, what we perceive to be a better pro uh, program for an individual. And they just say, hey, we're gonna go with this person for whatever reason may be, you know, um, and we try to get information why they don't go so we can, you know, uh, retool next time and be more competitive for the next client that, you know, we may uh, be able to serve. But, you know, it, it's when you know you are the minority in America and everybody else is doing business, it's real difficult sometimes to get them to understand like, hey, we, we can do the same thing that they can do. You know, just give us a shot, you know, uh, why not us, you know, and let's let us perform and deliver on the promises that we say we're going to deliver on. So, um, so but I, 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 go ahead. I, okay. I was just going to say, I mean, I think that the awareness thing is obviously the, the first step, but unfortunately it just seems like it's just going to take a little bit of time, you know, like, I don't, I don't know how, uh, how dude, none switch. of us are going to solve this problem. Right. It's like, all, all we can do is train the next generation to continue yeah. carrying the torch, man, because it, this, this problem didn't just, well, you that's what I'm saying. Start yesterday, it's been right? Like for so for forever in this country, and it's just like things are just now starting to get to the point where um, you're seeing a little bit of progress, uh, but it's not it's, it's not overnight, and it and it just exactly. you know that that's the unfortunate part about it. And I think I, I think you probably get some of the stuff um, you know when when you're asking like, well, why not us? I mean we all try to do that. And it, I, I think a lot of it sometimes too, with those people is they just don't really want to tell, you no. like they'd rather just like either not give you a reason or just make something up than, than tell you what the real answer is. And that, that part's yeah. unfortunate too, you know? See, I would yes, never, sir. I would never be able to make it in that setting. Like, because, because I'd flat <laughs> out ask him, man. I mean, seriously, I would, I was like, is it, you know, is it because I'm, is it because I'm a minority? Is it because I'm black? You know, <laughs> I, I would ask him right to their face. Because that's, that's the whole thing, man. I've got a lot of African-American friends and we, you know, it's interesting because I literally, my office is directly next door to the high school that I, I went to when I, when I was in high school. Yeah. And, um, you know, I look over there and, and every now and again, just think back to what things were like at that point. And, you know, we, that Kyle, just for your edification, this is back when they used to bus, you know, they would bus the kids from, city yeah, they would, well, they would bus city people out here to the suburbs for yeah. certain grades, but they would bus the suburb kids into the city for sixth and seventh grade. So mm. okay. a lot of these people I'd been 
I'd known or gone to school with off and on for a number of years. Like, I, look, man, I was, I was honestly only one of like maybe two or three white dudes in the basketball locker room, to be completely honest. Yeah. Never thought anything of it. Right. I didn't, no, I was never the way treated, things were. Yeah. I was never treated any differently. I was never looked at any differently. And I didn't net, I didn't look at anybody else any differently, you know, than, than I felt like I should. Right. Baseball was a little different because we just didn't have as many, we didn't have as many, now you had more Hispanic min, uh, min, minorities playing right. in, in baseball, but we didn't have, we didn't have the African-American people there. But then if you take that and then you flip it around and I move partway through my junior year up to West Virginia, which is ultimately where I graduated from, we had three black people in the whole school, Right, the whole school, Wow, yeah, like a couple thousand students in this high school one of the biggest schools in the entire state. They weren't there, man. It, it was the craziest thing. I never like, and, and I lived in, I won't even talk about the years that I lived in Alabama. Okay. We'll just, we're going to expunge that from my record. Cause that's its own, <laughs> that's its own animal. But I guess, you know, the thing to me is this, I would rather somebody, and you can tell me your opinion on this, Jason. I just, I know how I am. If you're if you're gonna have a problem with me because of my race, my race, my ethnicity, whatever, I'd rather you just tell me. Then I know what I'm dealing with, right? If you don't like me because I'm black, tell me that. Now I know what I now now I know, I know what I've got. The problem is you have people who subscribe to these these biases and prejudices, whether they're intentional or unintentional. You don't know. You don't know who the wolf in sheep's clothing is, man. And that's the thing that bothers me. I think the most if you if you are so ingrained in that belief system that you're going to make business decisions that quite frankly could cost you more money because you chose not to do business with a minority, like you should be perfectly comfortable just telling everybody, right? I and, mean, put it on your license I, plate for crying out loud. We all want to know who we're dealing with. And and I respect that if somebody going to tell you, but I'm thinking, you know, it's so difficult now to really people to speak their mind with this cancel culture that yeah. they won't even, they may feel that, they, but they would never express it. You may have some bold individuals that may be able to say, nah, I'm not gonna deal with you because you black, you know, or minority. Mm -hmm. um, but we have never, we have never gotten it that bold, you know, um, and I never ask as that question as well. Um, but you could tell, you know, you can, you, you, you know the vibe, you could feel you know, you go in, yeah. in the room and you can just see the, the cold stares and, you know, uh, and that's why, and that's another reason we deal with that premium that we deal with as of, as of right now, because everybody on our team is, is minority, you know, uh, so as we grow and, and get inclusive in our agency, then we can start to send other representatives as they do. You know, you send, you gotta, you gotta spend, you wanna spend a tennis person to that person. You gotta go, you're going to see uh, a Caucasian, you wanna send them, you know, to represent. You get better outcomes like that I have experienced, you know. Um, in well, my that was actually journey. one of my next questions. I was gonna ask you, did, have you found that um, because of some of that being in the marketplace, has that dictated sort of the kinds of accounts and, and types of accounts you're going after? Correct. That's why, yeah, that's why we deal with the small businesses because small businesses, they, they just, one of their, one of their main uh, problems is they want a premium. They worried about premium. When you're a small business, you just, every dollar really counts. So they're like, Hey, if you could, if you could give me the best premium with the great coverages that I require, I'm going with you. You know, that's what we've seen our best work. When it gets to where somebody got an unlimited pocketbook and they're doing real well, millions of dollars in assets, and they have a decision, they have a board, they have to make those type of decisions. It gets a little difficult because now it's relationship plays and all other things come into that, 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 uh, that, that part of the business as well. And so we decided to, hey, this is where we at with it. And uh, as we grow our firm and get bigger and bigger with resources, then we can probably go after those and, and have more success. But right now, we're just going to concentrate on where we know we can uh, get some get some wins. So talk about um, like what's your geographic spread when you're when you're rolling out this franchise model? What's your footprint? What do you want it to look like? 
Uh, what do you mean by that footprint? Like states are that we in? Yeah, I mean, are you trying okay. to stay because you, you're in Philly and Wilmington yeah. right now? I don't so, know yeah. exactly how far those are apart from each other, but it's not far. I know they're they're relatively yeah. close. Yeah, yeah. Philadelphia and Wilmington is literally 20 minutes away. You yeah, know? that's so, what I figured. So, so the, 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 the so we in Philadelphia, uh, New Jersey. We in this eastern seaboard. So we Philadelphia, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia. We going up South Carolina, North Carolina, uh, up to that place, and Georgia. You know, Georgia, Atlanta in particular has a big, you know, uh, black and uh, Spanish population as well. So, you know, we're we're looking to where uh, we are more at, um, so we can present that opportunity to them. And we in you know the eastern uh, seaboard of operations. So, so you're yes, looking to try and keep this thing, you know, generally where you're at right now, and then south correct. from there. Correct. No, no Miami office? Uh, not not yet. You know, I, 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 I love Miami personally. You know, I stay in Brickle. You know, me and my brother, we have a unit out in Brickle. You know, that's where we stay. So that's why, I, you know, Dave always saying every time you speak to me, that's where I'm at. I love, you, you know, the Miami, the Florida weather, minus the hurricane. How could you not, man? Yeah, the hurricanes, <laughs> the hurricanes obviously suck when they come through. But, I mean, I was outside this morning letting the dogs out, and it's 73 degrees and a nice little breeze. I mean – What's up up where you are? It's got to be freezing. Yeah, no, nah, it's it's getting chilly. So the winter's uh, actually knocking on our door, but it's it's like a light coat weather right now. You know, yeah. uh, once it hits January, February, it's dreadful. Gross. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's it dreadful up there. <laughs> no, I spend I spend enough time up there that I know and I get it for sure. So, um, as you oh, talk to me a little bit about what this process looks like, because, you know, somebody, we, we want to make sure people know enough about kind of what you're trying to do that they pick up the phone and call or email yeah. or whatever else. So let's just say that I'm, a, and, and I'm assuming by the way, that you're not looking, you're not limiting this to minorities, are you? Or No, no, not at all. Not at all. Right. I didn't it's, think it's so inclusive. because that's no. the, that that's kind of the double-edged sword right there too. Yeah. Right. Because you're going to have the establishment that points back at you and says, well, hold on. If, if you, I can't be white and have a franchise yeah. <laughs> in prominent insurance, nah. how are you really solving a problem? You're just yeah, reversing yeah. it. Right. So yeah, we, no, we, I mean, we're inclusive what, of all. Yeah. I would expect nothing less from you, my man. So right. what um, I decide this is something I want to do. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to start. You and I have a conversation what can I expect this process to look like of me opening up a franchise for prominent? So it depends where you at. You know, we look for those that never heard about this industry. So we have, you know, uh, that market that not licensed, they want to retool and, you know, start an, uh, a career in this $5 trillion industry. You know, you come to us, we got a process. We put you through, you know, um, speak to our franchise. We got a franchise development team you know, that walks them through the process, has an initial conversation, um, figuring out what they want to do, just that that conversation. We, we bring them through some PowerPoints of the industry and how vast it is and how much money you are, the potential that you can make and the lives that you can change in this industry. Um, that's one. And two, you know, um, they go through the process, figure out if they're the right fit because there's a franchise fee involved. And then those, you know, since we're going after the minority, you know, that's our particular niche, you know, uh, since we're going after the minority population, a lot of them, they may not have that initial franchise fee. So we have a path to partnership. So, you know, they become a producer with prominent. And as long as they with us, they keep, uh, you know, we take 10 percent each year of the franchise fee. And then all of the uh, the business that they're doing when they want to transition over, they get to keep that as part of their franchise moving forward. You know, so we get in the path, you know, and that and that, and that way it's no fee involved until you're ready to uh, basically, you know, turn the, uh, the key in order to get your own agency, which is trying to make people agency owners. That's our key, you know, autonomy. You know, everybody want to be an owner. That's why, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't name it Rodriguez Agency. I named it Prominent, something that everybody can own, you know, and build. And that's what we're looking to do. We're just looking for those that's willing to build a business. And even the captive agents, you know, we have the system similar to what State Farm offers in all states. So, you know, a lot of captive agents, want the independent model, but they still want that, 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 that captive feel, you know, of the systems, the processes and everything in place in order to be able to scale without missing a beat and starting from scratch and having to figure it all out. As you know, you, you could allude to, you know, David is, is very, 
it's very uh, difficult. <laughs> yeah, so I want to make sure I heard that right. Are you bringing people in kind of as satellite producers first before you give them a full franchise in their area so you can get them trained and teach them your way of doing things, make sure they aren't going to do anything crazy, you know, on the insurance side and all of that. And then they have the ability to be a partner and, and own that area, that territory or whatever. I just want to make sure I'm hundred percent clear on how you're doing that. Yeah. So that that's it's two parts. You got those that we allowing after they go through our process and get approved, because it's a, like I said, when, when you, when you, when you, uh, purchasing the franchise, we all got to be on the same, you know, the the same playing field, same culture, you know, we want the same mindset, serving our community, things of that nature. So there's a process to get approved to be a franchise. But we know if we're going to, you know, we're going to our minority population in particular, but we want everybody to come into, we got an opportunity for everyone. And we know our people don't have a lot of money. So we have to give them another barrier of entry without having to be able to fork out that franchise fee because a lot of people don't have that opportunity. So we say, hey, come be a, a, a producer, unprominent. If you don't have the franchise fee and you want to get in this industry because this industry is very uh, lucrative and it changes families' lives and it's a great industry to be in, you know, and, and it's overlooked as you, you, you know, uh, podcasts have a podcast. We know this is an overlooked industry. So we have that barrier to entry where it don't cost you anything become a producer and as you're building your book with prominent over and uh, you you may want to stay with us one year and, and want to get a franchise saved up enough money two years three years but every year you with us we're going to take 10 percent off the franchise for a maximum of 50 percent because you got can't okay. just give them the franchise because it's franchise law what you do for one you got to do for all Mm -hmm. So yeah, understood. But they have the ability yeah. to get up to fifty per earn fifty percent of that franchise fee before they ever go down that road. I mean, I, that's a that's a great move. Correct, correct, correct. You so, know. what are you looking forward to the most? Uh, just looking forward to build and and and, and create, you know, uh, communities and and give more, you know, uh, leverage to our industry because it's a beautiful industry to be in and just let, and, and make, bring awareness to it. That's one of our things too. We're trying to bring awareness to this beautiful industry. That's the thing, you know, uh, like you guys is doing every, every week, come on a power producer podcast, you know, the things you do in the community, just bring awareness of how, uh, good this industry is, how good it's been to your family and things of that nature. Cause you know, when people come into this industry as you are here on everybody's podcast, they got it. They got in by mistake. Somebody told them about it. They didn't know nothing about it till they got into it. And they were like, wow, I wish I would have knew it's the best kept secret. You know, we just try to make it as, as sexy as, you know, being a financial advisor or a lawyer or a doctor, you know, uh, because, uh, we make as much money as, as those, uh, other career fields do as well. Absolutely. So listen, I'm going to apologize up front because I don't remember exactly what the position is that you have, but you're also doing something inside of one of the national organizations, right? You have a leadership position and I remember seeing it on LinkedIn. I remember reaching out to you about it, but it, for whatever reason, it's escaping me. Um, but you were on the cover of the magazine the one month. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The same month as you. Same month as same month as you, I think, right? Was it you on a different one? Been, was on a big eye. Been, I was on I was on Big Eye in, in December of last December. year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Same month. There you go. I was on that. So I'm the uh you know, um insurance agents and brokers, which is part of the big eye. You know, it's yeah. the Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Delaware, uh IAB. And I'm the chair of the board for um for Delaware you know, uh, I'm IAB. So we have a board meeting actually on uh, Monday. Uh, so I'm excited about that. And like, you know, just pushing diversity, they doing studies as well as now. And just like the board, I'm the only, I'm the only uh, minority on the board. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just like that everywhere. You know, uh, about 20 of us between all Pennsylvania, Maryland and, and Delaware. And I'm just the only minority, but you know, uh, but they, they embrace me very very you know they want to see change which we're which we're bringing and everybody's open to it you know having that conversation because everything starts with a conversation like we're having today and then it's, and then the change comes then it becomes flesh you know You're just having that conversation showing hey this is what we need to be let's try to get this up you know the playing field you know because if if everybody's in a in a better space we can live harmoniously 
You know, if I'm starving and you got all the money, I'm be trying to knock on your door. And if you, you know, it's going to get to that, you know, so if we all eating, we, we all uh, be in a harmonious place, you know, and this is where we're trying to, this is what we try to do and a lot of other individuals trying to do it like yourself, you know, by allowing me on your platform to talk about, you know, the things that uh, we may face in this industry. I invited you. I didn't allow you. Yes, invited me. Correct. One's in, one's intentional, and and yes. I was very intentional about that, my man. Exactly. Once I told you, you said, "Man, I got to get you on there immediately. Pick a date." And, and yeah, you, and then it took three times, right? <laughs> three times. Hey, third time the charm. They start. Listen, they that's say, how right? you know I treat you just like everybody else. Is if it took you three times for it to finally happen, man. That's a hundred percent across the board, for the most part. My schedule is subject to change all the time, especially you know, with my wife traveling sometimes and the, all the crap that we deal with, with the kids and everything else. But, you know, I'm, a, I'm pretty straightforward with everybody. You know, I, I will work side by side. I'll go to battle with anybody any day of the week. If they're out there putting themselves out there to, to do what they can to better themselves. The only exception I make is when it has something to do with my family time and that never gets touched ever. And, I, right? and that's, so, and that's respected. Yep. hundred percent. Well, listen, man, is we're, um, we've been going almost an hour. I want to, I want to ask you before we wrap up, what's one piece of advice that you would give to anybody? It doesn't even have to be minority, um, advice. It can be if you'd like it to be, but what's one piece of advice you'd give to anybody who's new wanting to get into this industry, how they can break in. Oh, uh, just, just get with, you know, just get with individuals that like yourself, myself, uh, that's going to actually help them, give them the information and want to give back like you do so selflessly every, you know, week. So we we do the same thing. Just get with those that want to see change, that want to, uh, you know, help you get into this industry and, and so on, be successful. So find a mentor, find somebody that's willing to help, you know, give you the right information and, and, and see that information work for you you know, help you out with it, you know, not just tell you something because a, a book can't guide you, a person can, you know, uh, so not just give you the book and say, hey, this is, no, this is, let me, let me, let me take your hand, let me show you, you can shadow me, you know, come on an appointment with me, see how I operate off office, spend a few hours with me, those are the mentorships that, you know, I, I feel that really put something in somebody's bank, physically and spiritually, financially 100%. and spiritually. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, so, with all that being said, how do they reach out to you, man? If you're the guy they want, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, you know, you can uh, reach us online, prominentagency.com. That's prominentagency.com. And also you can reach me as well. Call uh, 302-351-3368. I'm here for you. My email, jason at prominentagency.com. Any information, you know, I want to help out. Anything I can do to make sure that somebody else is successful, man. I, that's where I get my, my blessings from. Mm -hmm. absolutely ladies and gentlemen he is jason rodriguez from prominent insurance jason at prominentagency.com i'm not going to pretend to remember the phone number if you didn't get it the first time <laughs> hit that rewind 30 seconds button and get a pen and paper out be ready to write it down he just told you man he's ready to have the conversation he's here to help he's here to support if you're looking for something new you know i just i get multiple emails every day from people who want to know how to get started in insurance, how to be successful in insurance. I had one this morning that came through from a dude who's a mortgage broker that listens to our podcast. No idea why, but all the power <laughs> to him. Um, you know, he, he wants to get into this industry. He wants to know more about it and make a move. And so, you know, having guys like yourself that are there, you know, it's awesome to know that there are lifelines People just get weird, man. They don't want to reach out. They don't want to call. They don't think that you're serious and sincere in your offer when you make it. And that's something that I run into all the time. I tell people every time, right before I get off the phone, and I've probably said it to you multiple times, don't be afraid to use me as a resource. Please let me know that's how right. I can help you. Anytime you need anything, just let me know. And I'll make sure that I'm able to be, I'll make myself available to help you as long as it's not you know, intruding on family time or whatever else. So people, I would encourage you, you know, take the hand that's reaching out to help you reach out to Jason. If you have questions, if you're a minority, even if you're not, and you're just looking for a way to get started, 
I think that's a pretty cool model that you've put together. And I'm certainly looking forward to watching that thing flourish and watch how you grow it. Cause the one thing I'm certain of more than anything else that we've talked about in this last, you know, hour or so is that you're going to be successful regardless. So I know you're going to make this thing work, man. I just hope that I have some small part in helping you get the word out. Man, I appreciate you. And I, I, I really do, man, everything that you do and how open you've been since I met you, you know, to, to be willing to help me. And that's that's the truth. You've been open and willing to help me. And anything we do, as you said, be a resource. And anytime I called on you, you answered. So uh, that's true. Appreciate you. 100%, man. Everybody else, we will catch you next time. See ya. You've been listening to the Power Producers Podcast. You can follow Killing Commercial Insurance on Facebook and YouTube. And if you want to take your game to the next level, next level, check out our book, The Extra Two Minutes, and our website, Killing